Jeff Sculpt, welcome to the Plant Yourself podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Honor to, honor to sit with you. So let's let's jump right in. T- um, tell us about yourself and what you, what you do. Uh, so I'm an evolving entrepreneur, and and uh, now um, really for the first time in my life, um, you know, after spending a life of amplifying other people's visions and missions and um, this is the first time I'm the creator of my own, and it came from a very heart-centric um, place, and I'm the designer and founder of One Golden Thread, which is a regenerative nature fashion brand, uh, where, frankly, the clothes is beautiful and delicious and um, ethical, and um, as they are, it's an alibi for so much something deeper inside, which is the reminder message um, that we all um, can be... Um, share with each other which is you know we're all golden inside and and the greatest lie is the illusion of separation we're all connected to nature Hmm. so there's there's a lot to unpack in that so so uh, one golden thread is a a regenerative fashion brand it's a regenerative nature fashion brand and what i mean by that is that um the clothes um innovate with nature we're using um very um uh, high end um uh luxury elements that ultimately will biodegrade back to earth uh, so we're innovating with nature um, using regenerative tree fiber and then we're it's all the message and is all about connecting to your inner nature to stay connected to that and then we have a business model um, around regeneration where every item sold plants a tree so at scale um, we can be one of those important voices about giving back more than it takes to make which is where i think we were all going and following the lead of regenerative agriculture, regenerative food systems, um, that regenerative fashion, or fashion, which has long plagued the earth and has frankly gotten the hall pass um, of the century of being among the most polluting industries that very few people know about. Fast fashion um, needs to be exposed and we can um, come into coherence that there's a better way. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm curious because when I think of fashion, when I, when I first got you know, to know of your work, so there's a little part of my mind that's just totally cynical about everyone and everything. <laughs> and I try to keep it on a leash. You know, it's, it's, it serves its purpose. And my, my first thought was like fashion and regenerative are oxymorons because fashion is always about the new, new. And like, you know, Gandhi wasn't into fashion. He was just wearing his, you know, dhoti the, the whole time. Like, um, I guess let's let's start with what's wrong with fashion, and then we'll see whether one golden thread actually fixes it. Like, yeah. Well, first of all, I don't think that you know any. We're not here to to fix anything. We're not here to to be the savior. We're simply here to maybe educate a little bit and give people a very um, um, you know comfortable way to come back into coherence about um, what does it feel like to be embodied in your body as you wear clothes in your body, as opposed to being separated from nature. But let's first unpack what's wrong with fashion and uh, we can do it based upon four numbers. Um, And those four numbers are um, 187, um, 38 and three. Uh, There's 100 billion new pieces of clothes made every year. 87% of those will wind up in an incinerator or landfill within 18 months because we're taught that our clothes are disposable. Of those 87% of the hundred billion, less than where the number was 3%, it might be you know closer to 10 because things are, the arc is, is improving. Well, let's use three. of those are made with sustainable fibers. And what I mean by sustainable fibers is things that actually are natural, things that will actually biodegrade back to earth instead of polluting our earth or or, uh, toxifying our oceans. And that gets to the last number, 38. 38% of the microplastics in the ocean come from the clothes that we not only toss, but remarkably and sadly also wash. What I might mean by that is that there's 60,000 particles of microplastics that when you have something that's synthetic that you say, well, I buy it at a thrift store and sure it's plastic and when it's got plastic in it and you wash it, it's going into the waterways. It's leaching into the, into the soil. 
and then it's ultimately polluting the ocean. Now, it's a microplastic, you don't see it, or it's, it's, it, it's a, it, you can barely see it, but it shows up as fish as plankton. So the fish are eating that. That's why that there are studies that now show that humans are ingesting an average of a credit card a week. <laughs> if you're drinking water or if you're eating, eating fish, a credit card a week of plastic. Now, just to, you know, I'm, we'll, we'll move past this and get to solutionists because that's more interesting than talking about the problem because we know it's a big problem. But the last thing that's important to know is that these microplastics are turning into nanoplastics. Now, what are nanoplastics? Well, nanoplastics are br break down even smaller and it rises as condensation. And that's why there are studies that show, this is the first study came out two years ago, that showed that it is actually raining plastic. Now, you know, the, the, the biggest things that, that, that cause these things, you know, I mean, everybody thinks about it as the plastic bottles and what have you, but fashion is the thing that in this consumption society that is rapidly accelerating because we're, you know, our, our consuming power is 10 times of what our parents were. We're buying more things because we see things as disposable. So we see a better way and we see a better now. And the way is, well, what if we owned less things that we love more? Hmm. What if we actually own things that were built not to deconstruct and fall apart because they are most many things in fashion, because that means you're going to need to buy it again, but it's built to last. What happens if we can buy things that feel more like a uniform as opposed to an ego? Like one of my favorite expressions is, you know, we go over ego. What if we can buy wear things on our body that remind us that we are nature? And then what if we looked at the term, and I, I will ask you the question, you're, 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 you, you live and breathe in this world. You're re writing a beautiful, this beautiful book around, around this well point in the world. If I asked you and if I asked all your viewers, took them in a separate room and I said, what is sustainability? What does that mean? You know, uh, you, what, what does it mean to you? What is sustainability? Yeah, well, sustainability is... <clears throat> Something that's not basically, yeah, I'll define it in terms of a negative. It's something that isn't self terminating. Right. Okay. So, like, most of like, we don't eat, like, we need the word because we live in a world that's self terminating. Like, it may be happening slowly, and there may be people who are, you know, so ego invested in progress and science that they can't see that it's all, it's dying. Like, you know, like the, the, the metaphor that I got from, um, I think it was the Ishmael book. Um, about like the plane is, 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 is plummeting to the ground, but only the people in the very front can see that the ground and everyone else is like, Hey, this is great. We're on a plane. Right. So for sustainability is simply like, it's not even ex excellent. It's just like, we can keep go, We can keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. 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 We, you, 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 <laughs> I, I love that you, you said it like that. It's like, it's almost like an absence of a negative instead of existence of a positive. And, you know, it's very interesting. It's it's like, it it would be like if you sent your kids to to school and you said, uh, "Our your goal is to go get a C average. Go get them, kid. Let's <laughs> let's let's focus on maintainability because that's what sustainability really is." Well, the truth of the matter is that maintainability is not going to get us home. It's not going to improve our lives, and and so, you know, even even I mean. Even, you know, we talk about like the United Nations has the global sustainability goals. Well, I think we, we've, we've had it wrong all along. Let's presence. What are the global regenerative goals? And so, so how, how do you how do you define regenerative compared to sustainable? So sustainable um, in, in, the, in, in the world of the mind that I live in, sustainably sourced is beautifully. Let's use sustainably sourced things that will actually go back to where it came from. So you can call that circular system. Some industries call that. Uh, but it gets really interesting when you say, when, when we say, well, how do we mark and we measure? Can we put, can we put a KPI against sustainability? You can't. It's, it's, imp it's almost, imp it's so nebulous. What we can do is we can go beyond sustainability, sustainably sourced models. So sustainability, if you think of it as sustainably sourced materials, 
But if we thought, focus on regeneration, which is how can we use business as a collective force for social good? How can we actually give back more than it takes to make? Because with the population increasing in this world, we're, we, we are going to continue to acquire more things, do more things. And so if we can give, if we can use business as that collective engine, now it gets interesting. So for example, just to get very simple and, 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 and pragmatic, um, we, um, we source um, our material from, um, from a, it, it, it's, it's regenerative beech trees. Beech trees are, you've probably heard of bamboo, eucalyptus. Um, they can be um, turned into fabric and fiber. Well, um, in, in, in um, many um, humble opinions, beech is the highest grade of that because it's not clingy to your skin and it's a fast growing tree that regrows on its own. So the tree in itself regenerates. Um, and so you're using nature, you're innovating with nature to connect your inner nature and then a model of regeneration. So from one beech tree, we can make a, at least 108 of these. For every one of these, we plant a tree. Uh, and say what these are for people who are just listening. Uh, so so we, we make a suite of clothes uh, called One Golden Thread. And it's everything from nature wraps to tree shirts to tree pants to dusters. Um, uh, we're coming out with bedding. I mean, you know, just things that 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 when you have it on your skin, it feels like a second skin. It feels like you're naked in nature. Um, we're certainly not the only ones that are working with these materials, but this is where the industry is going. This is where the world is going. Now, it's about investing in self because the race to the bottom of fast fashion has also got to stop. Because what's, what is the true cost of fashion is not just the cost, um, the price you pay, but it's, it's the people. Um, that were the, the women that were enslaved, or the children that were um, that were that were enslaved to, to make these clothes in third world countries. You know, we are um, we are cutting and sewing with a women-owned, minority-led um, love shops in LA. We pay not um, minimum wage; we pay we pay benevolent wage. So it's not just about the materials and the, it's all also about the human um, the humanness of it. But just to get back to this idea about regeneration of giving back more than it takes to make. From one beech tree, we can make 108 of these, which are nature wraps. And then for every one of these, we plant a tree, for every item sold. And so at impact, you're talking about a one to one to eight X. From one tree, we can make 108 more. Now, we this is not a new concept. I mean, regenerative systems is a very powerful thing that we can all be looking at. But I believe that if we each look at our businesses and saying, how can we actually give back more than it takes to make, then it's not just like, the absence of a negative, it truly is the existence of a positive. Mm. So when I, when I think about sort of life in general, and I'm no biologist, and I'm no scientist, and I'm, I'm just trying to make sense of it, it's just, it seems to me that any organism that takes more than it gives from the environment is either going to go extinct or create the environment it's in to go extinct. And I don't think there's, there has been an, a sustainable organism on the planet that has managed to, that has managed to overturn that uh, that um, equation, and the fact that we have been doing it for I don't know how you know whether you want to say hundreds of years or thousands of years doesn't mean that we've uh, overturned the laws of nature. It just means the plane is taking a long time to hit the ground. Uh, unquestionably, and and listen, you know, um, it's it's hard to have these conversations. When you walk outside and the sky is blue and you know everything's great in the world and, and and you hear you know the sky is falling and climate change and what have you and, and i have to tell you something um uh you know we started by by really being the, the this this pulpit of, of sharing this information and it was like crickets you know because it's it's hard for people to wrap around their arms around something so big and frankly when their lives are you know when we are you know, the human nature or the human condition is, you know, we are, we, we as humanity, you know, we are selfish creatures, you know, and, and that's okay. So look, the most powerful thing that I think I've learned about, about benevolent business or any kind of business where you're trying to do something, you know, powerful in the world is I learned um, from my father and my dog when I was in second grade, uh, my dog, 
my dog's name was Sam and Sam um, had some, uh, some worms as it were. Right. And we had to give um, Sam a pill. And my dad takes me to his, his uh, bowl. And he says, okay, we've got to give Sam this pill. How do you think we do it? And I said, well, we'll hide it in his food. And my dad said, well, that's a great idea, but you know what? Uh, dogs are smart and they'll, they'll sense something and they'll spit it out. Huh. And I said, I said, well, he, and my dad, my dad says, no, you wrap it in something sweet, wrap it in something sweet. And then all, and even if it's a pill, the dog needs to swallow, it'll be a beautiful thing to receive. And that's what we're doing. We're wrapping a, a, a big pill of a, of an extractive polluting industry in something that is just delicious. And that has how our business has actually expanded, grown. It's why we've just, um, very honored yesterday received um, our first pre-seed round of, of outside investment. I've bootstrapped invested this as a for benefit up until now. And it's because we're wrapping in something sweet. The message is, is behind it. The intentionality of the model is what drives it. And yet um, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, invest in something that reminds you um, that, life is, that life is golden. And when you put something on your body, um, that you can own less things you love more, um, that makes that reminds you of, of what you feel like inside. That's a beautiful message and meaning. Hmm. That reminds me of a, of um, a few things. I, lo- I love uh, I love your um, homage to Sam, who's uh, presumably not 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 still incarnate, but still uh, doing good work in the world. Um, you know, first it, re- it reminds me of how the sort of plant based slash vegan movement has evolved from like pouring red paint on people wearing fur coats to creating delicious meals and, you know, foods that people actually want, right? Rather than just preaching to us about how bad we are for, for consuming animal products. I I can't agree with you more. You know, it's a, it's a powerful thing when, um, when innovation um, can catch up with passion. And, um, you know, I think about like, uh, you know, these, these beyond burgers or what have you, that, that it's, it's these, these gorgeous things and you eat it and a meat eater would say like, this is, this is one of the best burgers I've ever had. And they're like, well, that's actually not me. Yeah. And it it invites somebody into, 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 um, an, an awake call, right? It's an awake up call. You're just kind of like, oh, wait, there's, there's a different way because we, we are, you know, we are creatures of habit until somebody presents, a, a, um, you know, a, um, an easy on-ramp for self-enroll. And that's what I think we, we, we are all doing. Any of your listeners that are, that are on this is because they are either creating those easy on-ramps for self-enroll or they're intrigued with the opportunities um, to reveal um, a, an emergent version of themselves. Okay. I want to come back to that phrase, easy on ramp for self and roll, because I don't understand it. But the, I just want to say the other thing it reminds me of is there was a TED talk I enjoyed. I was probably 10 years old at this point by a British marketing executive named Rory Sutherland, who was talking about what we need to do as marketers is to sell more delight and less stuff. <laughs> right. And the example he used was how um, I forget it was the British or the French spent billions of dollars over 10 years to speed up the train that goes the channel train from uh, from wherever Orleans to uh, to London. And so like just so people could get there an hour faster. So it was like four hour trip instead of five hour trip. They said, if you had given me like a tiny percentage of that money, I would have hired supermodels. <laughs> beautiful men and women to walk up and down, giving away free alcohol. And then people would get there and go, God, that train went too fast. I love that. I love that. I love that. that. You know, it's, we're, we're, um, oh, it's a great, it's a great metaphor that you bring up about speed because, you know, we're, we're in this instant gratification um, it's even like fast fashion, you know, whatever it's, it's get it, fast food. It's everything, you know, the, the, the likes, the, 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 the nanosecond around social media, the, uh, even, even how fast, um, you know, um, somebody can be gaslighted online. I mean, it's just, it's, just, we're, we're in this, in this micro, um, nanosecond culture. And I think this idea, like, 
slowing down. So when I talk about easy on-ramps for self-enroll, what does that mean? Um, you know, what if we can give people um, an opportunity to um, to let go of the of, of the the feeling around compromise? You know, that if I want something as it relates to, let's say, clothing, if I want something eco, it's not going to be stylish. If I want something stylish, um, it's going to somehow be extractive. Or if I want something of this, it's going to be something that um, is is only seasonal. You know, we believe in owning less things to love more. We believe in, in when something hits your body that it, it you look at yourself and it's like there's some something's going on. And you know, there's 500 five star crazy reviews on our website that literally like, am I allowed to speak French on your on your? Oh, own? please, please. Yeah, I mean, that, that you can't write this shit. I mean, you could not write this shit. You know, you, you, you look at what the way people are expressing and they're talking about like, I feel like I feel like myself. I see myself. And and so. You know, this idea of easy arms for self-enroll is we're living in a compromise-free society now. We can have the vegan and we can still have the delicious thing that tastes like meat. Mm-hmm. We can wear clothes that, um, that, that allow us to feel embodied that are also eco. Now, there's a cost associated with but the true cost. The true cost is what is, is the cost of if we don't take these, these steps. Because the true cost is the fact that we're going to be wearing masks 20 years from now for a very different reason, because we're going to be checking the plastic reading in terms of the clouds, because we've let all the tires and the plastic bottles and the clothes pollute our oceans. And therefore we're not able to eat the seafood anymore. We're not able to enjoy even swimming in the ocean anymore. And we need to check the plastic readings. I mean, this is a real, real, but what if we can literally let go of all that and simply come into thought towards integrity to be stacked and to literally do nothing more than wear what you love, mm. do nothing more than eat what you love. Do, and, and we can do those things from a new place because there are innovation companies out there doing things in food, fashion, I mean, even music. I mean, just everything is, is coming together in really a renaissance. And that to me is, is, is something that, um, look, I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not a revisionist historist, so uh, it's hard for me to say, like, do I wish that the pandemic didn't happen? I, I don't like to think in those terms. But what I do like to see is is the blessing of all of this, of how we've come from this, of how this was an opportunity for us to reset and for us to maybe release some stuck stories and for us to maybe reveal who we are anew. Yeah, I love that. And it's actually the, the I, I have a a book just out called it's a, it's a basically a book on coaching and influence and how to help the people around you change. And we have a model, um, which is when people have, when we look at the problem, the first thing we do is look at the outcome we want and then look at how is the problem an opportunity to get to that outcome. So it sounds like exactly what you're, what you're describing. So the pandemic, you know, probably nobody would have been like, yes, let's do that. But once it's there, where's the opportunity to get to the world that we want to build? Yeah, yeah. We can either be problemists, or we can be solutionists. Hmm. You know, I, I uh, um, look. I think that there are, there is beauty in like activism, of course. You know, those that want to shed light on the problem. Um, uh, I love the term proactivism. You know, hmm. How do we? How do we? How are we all proactivists? And and that's simply um, seeing a problem as an opportunity. You know, change the language, change the game, and um, it's a beautiful um, it's a beautiful well start for all of us. Yeah. So so I want to ask you about the idea of of you know owning less, loving more. Um, so there's there's a bunch, bunch of things. So like. I do, I do podcasting and broadcast. So, you know, I needed a nice, I needed a camera of certain quality. So I start looking at cameras and now I'm like, Oh, look at all these beautiful cameras. And like, then I get the camera and I'm like, Ooh, like there's a new video about a new lens for the camera. And that like, there's, there's a way in which whatever I get just juices me for the next thing that's going to be coming down the line next year's model or an extension or a new miking system. And I can feel like the, the having 
the, you know, I get the box. I'm really excited about it. I play with it. And like, like the half-life of, of the satisfaction is tiny. It's really, really short. Um, you have a guitar behind you. We talked about it before we started recording. I got my guitar. It was a, a, a Martin D16H in 1993. And that has given me nothing but pleasure ever since. And it's like, there are, there are just a few things in my life. Like once I get them, it's like the relationship with them is what grows as opposed to the need to transcend them with the next thing. And I'm wondering how, help me think about that. Like, was it the guitar? Like if I'd gotten a tailor with a big plastic backing, would that have been the same thing? Like what, what makes a relationship with an object an own less love more relationship versus an own more want more relationship. There's so much, there's so much to unpack on that, but two things come to mind, you know, the Marie Kondo, uh, you know, um, the Japanese philosophy, like hold it in your hand if it sparks joy, you know, it's, it's intended, it's intended to keep and that guitar that you speak about, you know, clearly um, it's an expression of you because it's an extension of you. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, I just think about around self-awareness, you know, um, it's fascinating. Um, uh, and perhaps many of your listeners are aware of, 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 of the, 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 the uh, this incredible um, documentary called The Century of Self. Huh. And, um, and I'll, I'll just quickly recap because it's, it's fascinating. We are celebrating next, next year. 2022, the 100-year anniversary of the century of self. Now, if you rewind the clock 100 years, Herbert Hoover was the president. The economy was in the shitter, and he didn't know how to get it going. And, and so he hired this young art upstart by the name of Bernays, <laughs> who was the nephew of Sigmund Freud. And Bernays was playing on all of Sigmund Freud's you know, things about ego, id, um uh desire um ego um and um and came up with the whole cam really the, the birth of pr that was birthed in 22 and it, it was all the thing around like you know if you want if you want the um if you want to feel fulfilled by the house if you want you know um get the girl by getting the cadillac I mean, this is what the things that birth along the way, even the women's movement, you know, the freedom sticks, Virginia Slims, right? Uh -huh. um, you know, and so it became this whole story and it just catapulted us into this century of self around consumption um, unconsciously. Um, and, um, and then it, everything just, you know, accelerated with television. It accelerated with the internet. It accelerated with, you know, all, Things. And so we, we, we've been on this, this path, and this is an opportunity to come back into this, this moment. And again, that's why I'm referencing like the, the twisted gift of the pandemic. It's like, what, we, we're, we're not out to impress anybody anymore. Like it's, it's not about look at me, it's more like see right to me. And so I love this idea around like owning, like what do we actually see that if our house was, God forbid, on fire, that you would grab on the way out because it means that much to you. Those are those things. And, and it's, you know, it's 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 an honor just to 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 um, to hear from 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 those who 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 say like these clothes are a part of me, and it's not an ego thing. It's literally just a, it just feels like that. And so your guitar, maybe that book behind you that says play. I mean, whatever it is in your life that that is that is magical that that brings you um, deeper into um, into who you are today, not the past story, not 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 the things that we're holding on to that create a memory but really like who are we today and i think that that's a beautiful opportunity for us to consistently you know let go of our shell or obliterate our shell and come back into the coherence of who we who we wish to be mm. yeah and actually that's uh, the play is a canvas that my daughter painted for me so it's got extra extra meaning she painted that yeah so de definitely that, something i would uh, i would that grab is that is gorgeous. Oh, thanks. That's I'll amazing. I'll, I'll well, let listen. her know. Well, we, we, we do art collaborations and we, 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 we print on, we eco print on large nature wraps, which is all about tree fiber 
uh, that would be a fun one to, to, to play with. I, I will tell you, if, 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 if she could work with you guys on putting her art onto, onto your, like, she would be the happiest human on the planet. Well, uh, you heard it here first, uh, your listeners, and, uh, of, and we could plant a lot of trees and we could play while we're doing it. So let's, let's, let's have some fun. I love it. I love it. So um, you mentioned you just got a round of funding and you said you're like a benefit corp. I said it was like the B Corp. Is that the, the technical? Uh, so B Corp uh, is like from B Labs. We're, we're actually a registered public benefit company, which operates in the same capacity. And for those that are not aware of, of this term, it, 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 you know, structurally, I suppose it operates like a C corporation. But the, the, what it really means is that social good is at our core. And a give back impact is central to our model. Okay. Gotcha. So I assume you, you know, you go out and you get a very different set of investors. Like I was, I was involved with a startup and we had, you know, just sort of the purest motives or the, it was called well start. And we were going to, you know, bring lifestyle medicine to, to self insured organizations so they could lower their healthcare costs by helping people get healthy and adopt plant-based diets and like, you know, just all the good stuff. And as we were looking into getting funded at a certain point, it's like, well, we're, we're going to need money. And the people who are going to give us money are the people who are going to expect a return better than the stock market or way better than the stock market, given the risk. And I'm wondering, like how, like another one of those little voices in my head that's so cynical is like, I hear about a company that wants to change the world, and yet they're doing it through, through venture capital. Like, how is that possible? Yeah, it's it. It is. Um, I think for any business, um, bringing outside capital is. Um, um, it's a calculated risk, um, and so you need to. Um, it's. We've been very vigilant that it's not about the money; it's about the energy, and any money that we would ever bring in, it would be people that are committed to helping others. Um, and creating healthier community and planet. Um, and so, um, you know, I think that if you think of it like a like a totem, um, it's um, it's purpose, people, profits. And even within the profits, it's how can we use profits to be, you know, certainly to give a return, but also to be a profit for the planet. Mm. And so, um, you know, I'm truly honored this is a it's going to be interesting though as we as we do as we grow and perhaps we we look at a larger round um and go to more of an institute institutional we may never do institutional money for that very reason because institutional often um looks at it through profit and oh by the way sure there's a there's a purpose but it's got to be profit first what i what i would say though um that is um that is extraordinary as well that's happening in terms of the arc is there are um, incredibly wealthy people who want to put their money to powerful use. Mm. And um, there are also incredible um, investment um, consortiums that um, wish to do good in the world. You know, for instance, there's a incredible company that's focused, it's replant, replant capital, for instance. Um, and they, they're all focused on um, regenerative business models. So there are, there it's, it, 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 it takes um, patience um, and prudency to know who you are and to ensure that you are um, aligning um, uh, values um, as well as um, ex, um, uh, as well as purpose. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I have a lot more philosophical questions. And I'm feeling the urge to like let let people bite the the the, the Beyond Burger. Like, let's talk about like I don't know anything about clothes or fashion. I mean, I you know I wear them. Um, you know, I'm I, I probably have all you know, wonderful like you know Patagonia microfiber stuff yeah. that's uh, destroying the earth. But let's talk about one golden thread. Like you're you said you're the designer and the founder. Like like. Tell us, tell us about fashion. Tell us about this, um, your, you know, your vision and the clothes you make and like delight us. Well, I, I'd be happy to. And um, I would also, um, since you wish to go philosophical, I, I would be honored 
to share with you also um, that this did not set out to be a clothing company. <laughs> I mean, there was no thought that this was a clothing company. Um, you know, one golden thread um, was, <sighs> you know, it, it was really a, a parallel of my own personal journey of, um, of letting go of my own stuck stories huh. and, and my own um, uh, very unempathetic um, living towards myself. You know, I grew up empathetic to, frankly, everyone's journey but my own. I was the amplifier for other people's journey and, and visions um, as I grew into an adult but my own. Mm. And, and in what, in what um, capacity? Uh, just a serial entrepreneur. I did some things in, did a, a high end second home club, did some things on the internet. Um, uh, uh, I had a white label fashion house for bands and brands and it was always other people's ideas. And I was sort of the, the, the revenue monkey. You know, I was the, I was the business head. I was the, the marketing, uh, you know, the storyteller, but, um, uh, you know, just very quick sp- background on me is that I was getting sick, um, really sick um, as an adult. And in my 40s, I um, I had walking pneumonia three times in seven years, and it would always start in my throat, my throat chakra, and drop into my lungs and, um, and uh, then completely incapacitated. And, um, you know, I, I took a workshop that forever changed my life, and it was called Claiming Your Voice. <laughs> Because I realized, like, you know, we all have this this gift to share. And so I started being honored to be in the company of people like you and your listeners who have wisdom and things to share. And I was really receiving it. And I was re- receiving it in my, ex- my own experience. And I was reframing things and revealing who I was. And it all poured out onto the pages in 2014. Um, uh, I- I'll share something deeply personal. I don't typically share, but I it was... Um, the first time that I did plant medicine and um, and it was a buffer day after that. And I'm in Vermont and I'm staring at these white piece of paper, trying to write my thoughts. I'm just, nothing was coming. And then all of a sudden it just flowed out and what flowed out was something that was something like I'd never written before. It was like all the reframes and reveals and of, of, um, and it, it flowed. I mean, I'm poetry is very precious and it's what the pros do, but it was very floetic. It was very, it had a flowetry to it. <laughs> and it became my my life 2.0 humanifesto. And I buried it for a year because it was too, I shared it with nobody because it was too much to share and what have you and it was too deep. And then a friend of mine was going through a really tough journey. And she said, um, and she said something that spoke to one of the things in what I'd written. And I said, look, I wrote this thing. It's really personal. It's super raw. I mean, I was sweating saying it because I'd never shared something so personal in myself. And it was, and I said, but it, I, I feel like this might maybe will help you. And I shared it with her and she looked at me as you're looking at me with kind of expressionless and everything in my body around lack of worthiness, um, who am I to share came up and I was about to apologize. I would say, I'm so sorry. I, I shared that. I shouldn't have shared that. Uh-huh. And as I took the deep breath to say, I'm sorry, she said, Thank you. She said, I don't know what just happened, but you gave me a different way to think about what I'm going through. Thank you. You should share this. And I immediately mm. changed the subject. <laughs> and a, year late, a, a month later, my life forever changed in 33 words. 33 words. Um, I was in New York at a art gallery opening for Danny Clinch, super cool rock and roll exhibit. Everybody around the place is, you know, incredibly accomplished and just amazed to be in the room. And this gentleman turns towards me and asks me a question, South African. And, and I said, well, what kind of beautiful magic are you up to in the world? And he says, well, I'm, I've actually kind of come from a dark place, but I'm, I'm actually igniting. And I said, did you just say igniting? He said, yeah, I said igniting. And I said, well, listen, it's so funny. I wrote this thing and it's, it's got a three-part story of intention, integration, and ignition. And he says, well, I'd like to hear it. And I said, well, it's not really something you share. And, this, and uh, the sweat was coming 
<laughs> inside my body again, like, oh my God, what did I just walk myself into? And he says, no, I want to hear it now. <laughs> and I'm like, no turning back. And I shared it with him. And he looks at me motionless and it all came up again. I was about to say, nice to meet you. I got to go. And he, he said, hold on, mate. What are you going to do with this? I said, nothing. He said, no, no, I'm asking you, what are you going to do with this? I said, who am I to share? I'm just Jeff. And he looked at me and in these 33 words, forever sent me to my true north. Let me tell you something. We're on this planet for three reasons. To learn, to love, and to share. And if you're not sharing your gifts, you're being selfish. Hmm. Quit being so fucking selfish. He poked me in the chest. He turned and walked away. I never got his name. And in that (laughs) moment, it all became clear to me that if you have a gift to share, it's not being narcissistic, egoic, or selfish to, 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 to share it. It's actually inviting somebody else deeper into their own journey. And that's what sent me. And I didn't know what I was doing. I, 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 I walked away from a company that I was misaligned with that I co-founded. Um, and um, I um, knew that it was something about reminding ourselves that we're golden inside. And I started getting invited places around the world. And I went to Berlin. A beautiful artist was creating an exhibit there called Faux Real, Olivia Steele. And she invited me to share the Humanifesto and I brought golden threads with me. And that's what sent me on the journey. And that's how one golden thread started. I've tied tens of thousands of, of, of golden threads on people's wrists, inviting them into um, a blessing of reminding them they're golden inside. And then I realized that it started with a golden thread and it still does. There's a golden thread that weaves through every article of clothing. And um, there's such a storyline of, um, of that it's all about connection, connection to self, connection to community and connection to the planet. And, you know, the, the blessing is that um, the, the intentionality, the purpose, um, the desire to do right by the world, in the world, for the world, as the world um, has continued in terms of the supply chain. It's continued in terms of, of um, the way that we've created things um, where we care for those that are, um, that are making it. Um, it's, in the fact that there's no plastic packaging that ever touches the clothes when it's shipped. It, we ship an eco-enclosed mailers. And of course, every article of clothing also comes wrapped with a golden thread for you to tie on your wrist or somebody you love to remind them that they are also golden inside. So look, some people may be re- watching this and saying, well, this is too woo-woo guru for the, this is the opposite. This is just the heart of the arc of the fact that we're all having a human, you know, uh, the human condition is scarcity, it's ego, it's fear. Um, uh, the human um, experience is love and generosity and kindness. And the human experiment is what we get to play in the middle of that. And so we're, we're honored to be, you know, um, enjoying the play. And, you know, this is all supposed to be fun. So uh, let's have some. Wow, what, what a beautiful story. Um, it's, you know, it kind of reminds me of the Bible story of Jonah, right? Who, who gets called to share a message and keeps refusing and ends, ends up in a pretty deep place, you know, until finally accepting the mantle. Um, I'll show, I'll share something with you is that my mother, um, was the most prolific artist that I have ever known and her art. Um, was all about nature and us as one. This is my mother. Well, this is my mother. Mm. Let's see if you can see that. And then this is a piece of her art. You can see that. Wow. The golden threads. Uh huh. So this has been in my DNA. You know, this idea of like, well, we are nature, so let's connect to nature. And so, you know, and um, I mean. To truly full circle, my relationship with my mother deepened in such a heart level during her uh, uh, deep Alzheimer journey. You know, mm. there's a disease, mental illness that's going to touch so many of us in our lives. And two days before COVID got real, um, I had the, the noble honor of holding my mother's chest as she took her last breath. 
and to be there with her, I feel like that there was a part of me that was really birthed mm. in that moment um, to really step, you know, deeper into my my um, legacy um, as a designer, my legacy as an artist, um, and to come from a place of um, of love and connection. I'll I'll share, you know, something really beautiful with you is that is that when my uh, mother passed, I wanted to create something um, in her memory. And we were, quite frankly, we were dead in the water. We had $3,000 in sales that month. And I didn't know how I was going to possibly keep the lights on, pay anybody, you know, that was working on one golden thread. And we create, I created um, something in memory of my mother because there was all, um, all the pandemic was starting and nobody can get face masks because everything was sold out. And, um, and I was reading stories about how the homeless could not even go into a food bank um, because mm. they didn't have a face covering. So they couldn't even get shelter. They couldn't even get any nourishment. And so um, I wanted to create something that was also going to eradicate all the mountains of plastic, um, of all the uh, single use plastic uh, masks that, that, you know, there's Mount Everest sizes. Don't even get me started about that, about the, the disposable masks. And this is tree fiber. And we created a, a face wrap and for every one of these sold we donated one to a homeless soul in memory of my mother that month and and that's actually the way one golden thread you started with a benevolent act and what happened was is people said wow i want to feel this not just on my face but i want to feel this all over my body and all of a sudden people were um were buying clothes online that i didn't even know who they were because i was just selling to friends at that point huh. and that's really what sent us on this journey and it's amazing Rememory that um, we can start with one benevolent act, take one step forward, and that step can lead to something beautiful. Mm. Yeah. The other thing I'm I'm hearing in your story is that there was there was part of you that had to die, right? And I'm thinking like you know you're this you know the the money monkey, you're the mover and shaker. You can do the internet. You can, you know, you're the guy who walks into the room and everybody else has to prove themselves to you because there's a million people with visions and voices and you're going to choose which ones make it. And then to become like, so, so first of all, humble, but at the same time, like infinite, like I have, like what I have within me is worth sharing and I'm not going to like, I'm imagining a lot of your life was sort of evaluating like who's worthwhile, who's not worthwhile. And then being, being, you know, over the course of the year or so after your vision to, to say, I'm going to drop the evaluative mind. That must've been like dropping to some degree, like who you thought you were. Yeah. Identity. Um, you know, we, we, we white knuckle clutch our identity. I know I do. <laughs> and, you know, and for, and for what? And, um, and uh, you know, one of my favorite human beings, um, her name is Viet Simkin, and she um, she's a meditation teacher. And um, everyone should look her up. She's fantastic. And what, what's the name? Viet Simkin, B-I-E-T. Um, she, um, she spoke about the identity as a shell. And, you know, we, 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 we clutch it, we, 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 we hide within it, we, we need it for protection. And as we grow, maybe we press up against that shell, when huh. we press up against that shell, all of a sudden, we feel either blame or shame that we're bigger than the shell or what have you, or, or we've got to remain in the shell. And all of a sudden, that shell becomes not the home that we thought it was, it becomes like almost a point of discomfort, hmm. it becomes a place of dis-ease. And so there's only one way to do it. It's to obliterate the shell just obliterate, visualize it, just breaking up into fractals, you know, an infinite number of fractals to realize that you are the universe, that you are boundless. And, and to do it in a way where, you know, I, um, you know, words, my, my, my mother was the punniest person I know. My father was very precise with his words. So words, I believe words cast spells and we can choose our spellings wisely. And, um, and there's something so, um, so beautiful in in this notion around um you know our inner ego can be our quiet hero so it, so even like this this thing around the, your, your identity it's like if the identity is from within you know what's your what's the current master of your why 
um, you know, maybe, maybe it's this time, maybe it's another time, but I'd be honored to share with you, you know, some of the reframes and reveals that came from the Humanifesto, because I think it, it would be, it, we're, we're, we're touching on so many of these things around, around shedding, but I'll, I'll certainly follow your lead and where we want to take this. Sure, sure. I just, I just wanted to kind of make, make sure that I get people, you know, I, I, one of the outcomes is I want, uh, you know, your uh, cash register to ring. I want people to uh, get your clothes. But, uh, you know, I would love to hear some of those reframes. Well, absolutely. Well, look, if, if anybody um, uh, wishes to um, feel the feeling of, of, of this, it'd be an honor to have you um, join Regeneration. We'll be planting a tree in your name. I mean, you could say, like, join Regeneration, plant a tree. And, oh, by the way, get the most cozy uh, clothes you've ever you've ever enjoyed and of course uh, we're we actually have a, a physical location in la we have an atelier which is where we are right now okay uh, we have a, a pop-up spot in miami for any listeners that are um, in either miami or la um and then one golden thread.com um uh is the way to um to find us online and that's uh one o-n-e uh golden thread.com and um uh, we could even create if you'd like um uh, a special a little special gift code for your uh, for your uh, for your for your community that would be Ooh, I, the other thing I like being special what, what do they what do they get <laughs> well we can well what we first would do is we would create a, a code so um, we'd be planting um, uh, those number of trees for every item purchased from your community in the name of your community so that's cool um, and that's number one number two is they would be getting um, with this special code, eleven percent um, special pricing um, off as a gift by purchase, and so um, and we probably throw in a uh, throw in a Versa wrap as well. Oh, all right. I'm uh, <laughs> as, as, long, as long as you can do that regeneratively, I'm all for it. Listen, or they can or they can pick up the play nature wrap. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, and, and I I'd, I'd be more than happy to. Um, you know, show some of the other items if, if you'd like to see a few other items because there are some special pieces. But you know, I think that what you're given, I, I appreciate your your philosophical you know approach to, to to business and life. I mean, the the and it starts with values, right? So you know, I mean, our our, our values were born from um, from this notion around self love in in ignites a shared love for both community as well as planet, and so. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, if you'd like to receive the Humanifesto, it's four minutes and 44 seconds and we can roll through that or we can, we could, we can, um, speak yeah. about something else for us, whatever feels good. You know what I'm thinking? I, I think, you know, I've got about five minutes before I want to take a break. Cause I have another call later. Can we, can I get you back on a second time? That's even better. That's so even we're going to, we're going to tease the manifesto. <laughs> So my listeners will, will have to come back to hear part two. Um, yeah, let's. Um, that feels good because you know four minutes, and then I'm sure a lifetime to unpack. Um, just right now, tell us like what if people go to the website, like what can can get. Like I'm a you know I'm a I'm a dude. I spill food on my clothes. I garden and rip. Like what 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 is there for me? What's there for for different you know market First, segments? All right. So first of all, just just starting with the, the, the basics. I mean, like a recapitulated men's T-shirt that's also you. Every all the clothes are unisexy. So what I designed for me, this is the way it started. The, the world's perfect tee. So, um, so I wanted something with arm hugging sleeves. Something that wasn't like a Will Ferrell half shirt. Something that's more elongating. This is all raw edge, just like life. And so it, you know, of course, it's got a golden thread. You know, uh-huh. you know what? I need I need you a little closer to the microphone because, um, in fact, we, we can I can put up pictures, but um, like ninety nine percent of the listeners will listen rather than watch. So I'd okay. I'd rather I'd rather privilege the audio. Got it. Got it. Cool. Cool. So so yeah, we'll put some pictures up. I mean, we could even send you some pictures. But the point is, is that it's head to toe. You know, we've got we've got tree pants, tree shirts dusters which becomes something you just want to live in we've got long sleeve raglans um that are you know we've got a henley coming out um 
you know, we've got these nature wraps that become like an adult uh, woogie blanket that you just take with you everywhere. It becomes a scarf. It becomes a place to cut, you know, to cuddle up with you and your love. Um, uh, and we've got these Versa wraps. Um, and then we're, you know, we, we even have things in the atelier in terms of like tree fiber glasses. There's so much innovation that's happening. So things that we're, we're, we're creating and we're also curating. I'll share with you one thing that, that is the newest thing we've come out with, which is this looks like just a candle, right? Right. Well, this is also the most delicious massage oil. So this is a warm coconut, non-GMO soy c- coconut uh, candle that at the end of it, these are handcrafted in India. These become the most amazing drinking vessels for your, for your, for your water, for your wine, what have you. So we're, we believe in even something like a candle in the past, it would be something you'd throw away. Now it's like something that, that has a second life. Um, as a uh, for massage and has a and has an afterlife um as a uh, as a drinking vessel we we love continuing to to innovate and just think about you know where can we take things that that um approach uh life as a um, own less things you love more that are durable that are soft that are breathable antimicrobial and as it relates to things like a candle that have a continued life beyond its um its first form, form and function Wow. I'll, I'll tell you where my mind is going with this. I'm fantasizing about all, like everything in my closet. <laughs> the things I love are like falling apart because I've been wearing, you know, because I love them and I wear them for years and years. There's the stuff that I get to replace it with that, you know, I could care less about. There's way too much. I'm fantasizing about like having like th- two or three pieces of clothing that are, as you said, like my uniform that I could wear all the time, feel incredible in and go backpacking the world. Yeah. And, and, and this is, I'm I'm happy you brought it up like that because you know, what if we can look at life as we're, we're, we're all travelers and that whether you're traveling from the, from the, from the, from the bedroom to the couch or, or around the world um, that you can have things that literally you can dress up, dress down, that you can exercise in, that you can live in, that you can sleep in, that you can rock out the next day in. And that's one of the things that we're, I'm most honored to see the comments of the way people are enjoying these clothes is that these are threads that, that literally you can do everything in. And so, um, you know, this is street wear, beach wear, sleep wear, um, and life wear. And so it's a cool, cool thing what you're saying, which is like if you're traveling the world, which we all are, Wherever right. we, um, what if we can own less things that we love more that remind us that uh, the world is as golden as we feel inside? I love it. I love it. Hey, just curious. Do you, do you know um, my friends, Michael and Bianca Alexander? I do not. Oh, I got to introduce you. They, they have a, sh- a show on PBS called Conscious Living. Oh, wow. Um, I, <clears throat> they, they last year went to Berlin for the, um, the I guess it was the fast fashion um, um, protest around like, do you know, you know, who makes your clothes? Right. Um, and they try, you know, they travel around and they, you know, highlight people on their show. I think you'd be a, uh, a fantastic segment for them. So I'll, uh, I'll introduce you. I'd be honored. I'd be honored. Yeah. And for, for us, I mean, this is for those that are, are actually looking, um, this is actually was the first thing that we did create before there was clothes. It's a reminder. This is the one Oh eight. So it's a reminder that if you want anything that's infinite in the world or unity of community, it all starts with yourself. And the moment it starts with you, everything moves. Gotcha. And 108 is a um, like a um, right, sacred geometry number, right? It is. It's um, it's it it's the number that really is it re- references the interconnectedness of all things and beings in the universe. You know, if if there is a um, like a spirit animal for one golden thread, it would be Thich Nhat Hanh who coined the term interbeing, hmm. uh, which is all about that, you know, all these things are interconnected. And that's what the 108 reference is. And it's fascinating. Like if you Google 108, uh, the, the, the synchronicity of the way it shows up in astronomy, it shows up in our body, it even shows up in popular culture. Do you know there's 108 stitches in a baseball? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I must admit to never having counted. I, neither have I. Neither have I. But but uh, uh, 
Google seems to have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and baseball is life. So there you go. Um, well, Jeff, thank you so much. So I'll, I'll, we'll we'll connect um, offline to get that uh, code. So I'll 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 include it in the intro and outro, so people will have heard it and we'll hear it again. Uh, and I'll put it in the show notes for today's episode. But uh, wow, what an honor and how. Uh, how inter I feel like we've been in this in this hour. Just uh, it's it's been such an honor just to to getting to uh, to know your spirit. Well, likewise, it's been an honor to share with you and your your listeners. And thank you for the incredible um, container that you're creating um, for the world to thrive. All right. Well, blessings. Um, I can't I can't wait. Now that I understand, I can't wait to like open the browser with my wife and and have her tell me what I'm going to look good in. <laughs> I, I, I would actually love to uh, I, I would actually love to have a uh, another thing I'd love to do for you and any of your viewers if I'm in the atelier is we do virtual kind of like fittings where um, I could try some things on and su and suggest some things because I, I I can size people up pretty well in terms of what might what might strike their uh, strike their golden fancy. Oh, awesome! Yeah, we'll take we'll take you up on that, and I'll also uh, tell my daughter you liked her her painting. So. Very much so, and, and I and I, uh, sincerely, that would be a fun 2022 project um, to create a an oversized nature wrap all around play. All right, I'm, uh, as soon as we get off, I'm, uh, the, the the Zoom call, I'm going to call her and let her know. How old is she now? 25. 25. Oh my god! And how old was she when she made that? I want to say 17, 18. And she made she made it for me because I needed it. She also uh, I don't I don't I don't think I have it up now. But she also did a hand painted sign on wood that says "Chill, bro." Because <laughs> she made that for you because you. I'm getting chills now. She made that for you because you. She thought you needed that. I needed to hear it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Beautiful. So so you know. You you had you had Sam and your dad. I have my kids telling telling me what I need to hear. I love it. I love it. I I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this. Um, thank you for uh, for giving me permission to to share um, my story and and uh, this is what we're all here for and um, and uh, look forward to seeing you down the road and for any of your listeners, look forward to um, getting you as part of one golden thread. Right on. And, and I'm, I'm real excited to have part two and to talk about the Humanifesto. Honor anytime. Awesome. Take care, Jeff. All right. Blessings.